BigHeadsMedia.com for more great podcasts. Welcome to Dig on America, where we speak truth to power. Every week, we give you the dig on how American history, policies, and media created the social and political issues we face today. DOA is independent media supported by listeners, but they'll tell you we're just fake news, deep state propaganda, funded by George Soros, the Clinton Foundation, BLM Marxists, and... Lieutenant Commander Jordy LaForge. Oh, longtime supporter of the show. Um, yes. Reading Rainbow alum. <laughs> <coughs> Oh, I didn't think of one. Oh shit. Um, let's see. Come Who's on, obscure come on, come on. enough? Um, the governor. The governor Arnold, former Arnold. governor of the great state of California. There's a, um, hold on, real quick, real quick, real quick. There's an amazing. If you guys like metal out there and you know the band as LA Dying, uh, they have a yeah. goof side band called Austrian Death Machine, where it's everyone in, is pretty much playing their same instruments except the bassist is doing the vocals right. and everything is in an Arnold Schwarzenegger impersonation. Like the whole thing. And then all of the songs are about like one liners from all of his movies. Like oh, really? you have been the race. I need your, your clothes, your boots and your motorcycle. Like all of that. Like every single one liner from Arnold is a song. He only no, has like four uh, four one liners, and they're all in every movie. Stick around. <laughs> <laughs> well, you should stick around. Stick around. Dig on America. I must have voice for the underground. Dig on America. The podcast. That's, that's the podcast. More Irish. That's Irish. Irish hey, I am not good at impersonations, no. so don't don't I'm you judge me. Show. I'm here to I'm here to judge you. <laughs> uh, and speaking of, well, first of all, I'm Jason Dodge. Welcome, to Dig on America. This guy over there, that's Mikey Famine, um, and he is yep. the producer extraordinaire, expatamudu, exfoliantaire of the show. What's um, what's what's Doctor Strange's title? Like the Grand Sorcerer? I'm the Grand Producer. The, source, the Sorcerer Supreme. The oh, Grand the Producer Poobah. Supreme. Producer yeah. Supreme. That's the Grand Poobah of Sorcerer, um, <laughs> aka Harry Potty. Potter. <laughs> Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> You've been hanging the out show, with kids all day. You've been hanging out with kids all a, day. <laughs> the show's off to a flying start, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we are blocks. here today with a very special guest right below me here. Um, he is running for Congress in Florida. Juan, and I hope I say this right because I didn't check with you beforehand. It's Paradis. Uh, Paredes or Paredes. Paredes. If you like, you know, the road it cars too hard. <laughs> Parades. Oh, Lord. No. I can roll the R's. I know I learned how to do that by listening to La Bamba. I was like, I need to learn how to do that. You just, um, you're, just you're just growling. You're just growling. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to be on. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Thanks for coming. Hey, we appreciate you coming on, man. Um, so Juan, uh, let's just get started with the show here. So you're running for Congress right. um in in Florida. Um, I believe 25, is that correct? 25, uh, 26, 26. 26. And um before we learn about your campaign, bum, on this show, bum, we like oh. to start with very, very pressing super important questions the so, serious stuff we get out of the way first with that like forget all the rest of the stuff your campaign is in jeopardy right now based on the answer of these questions so it's let me true. call an audible let's see he's from florida right so i have oh, to no. use i have to here. do flow rider <laughs> flow rider 45 <laughs> say low right, we're low, gonna low but I... <laughs> we're gonna all play right. a game with you Juan. it's called four down territory we will ask you four questions you will give us four answers uh and um based on those four answers we'll decide whether or not you're going to win your your congressional race so i will defer to mikey uh who will ask the first question hmm if you had to live in like the marvel mcu dc universe um i don't know the boys any kind of like superhero universe which one would you live in Or which um, city? Because you could be like Gotham, Metropolis, whatever, you know. 
I would say, and it can be from any universe. Does it doesn't have to be like from Marvel or DC or anything? Any anything like that. As long as it's fictional. Yeah. 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 I would say probably. I would say probably the boys because that would be that would be the most realistic and the most like how, how I I feel like I can see that as an actual reality if there were superheroes in our world. So I got good news for you. Vaude International is a sponsor of the show. <laughs> oh wow, nice. Yeah. <laughs> we have Compound uh, V on the way. So you know what's crazy? Did you see that they came out with the cartoon for it? No, I didn't see no, that. No, I didn't. The there's, there's, an anim- there's an animated boys thing. It's called like a, what's, uh, it's what Butcher said, uh, Diabolical. It's called Diabolical. Mm-hmm. It's like the boys, Diabolical. Is it like like Invincible style kind of like? It doesn't look that good. Like okay. Invincible <laughs> looks slick. Invincible is like 90s Batman uh, slick. Yeah, I was going to say Invincible is not quite like great animation. It's a little choppy from time to time. It's I like, like it. It's it's probably like you're probably right though. It's like '90s DC. Yeah, but it's like, it's, but but the it, it's more like the art of it. You know what I mean? It might not right. be like amazing technically, but like the way they the way they mm-hmm. place everything, the art of the actual animation is incredible. Oh, like you don't I, even notice it. No, I, right. I I love Invincible, and like when I first started watching, I didn't even know it was a cartoon. I just knew it was. A, they just told me to watch it, and I was like, <laughs> it's a cartoon. <laughs> but it looked it reminded me so much of DC animation that I gave it a shot right away. And I was like, and I was like, this is just as good as anything DC's put out. But anyway, oh, yeah. All right. So my first question was going to be something else, but I need to. F- I have two that I was going to ask, and I only want to ask you one. So I'm going to ask you a preface question. What is your favorite kind of music? My favorite kind of music, I would say, is hip hop for the most part. Oh. That's pretty much all I li- like. Like I, I listen to a majority. Like if you look at my uh, playlist, is majority just hip hop. But it's 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 more like the ones that tell a story. You know, I like I love a good story when uh, when I was seeing hip hop. So that's like like me, like who who's on your who's who's in your playlist right now? Uh, hold on, my phone was dying. Let me grab it. I don't really I don't really have a playlist. I just uh, I Do usually tell Siri to play like just songs that I like and. Uh, I, I listen to so many songs on Apple Music that it's just like she just already knows. But let me see. Oh, one oh, so person it's I got you to... set up with the algorithm and not with actual songs. I okay. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, but w- one thing, uh, one thing I listen to a lot is Joyner Lucas. He's like the top for me right now. Um, he's good. I, he's good. Um, he's a solid choice. Yeah, and oh, Mar- Marlon Craft. I really love his. He has like a lot of political music, and he does. A really good job at like explaining it in, right. in like perfect rhymes. I love it. Pop smoke. Uh, I mean, he's just. He, little, I I, I, I got into him recently. I got into him recently, and I didn't know he was he he you know he died. He just died. Uh, yeah. when I started listening to, and I and I was and I was super upset because you know, it was really good. His uh last. His last Is it bad uh, that album. I don't know any of those guys? <laughs> nah, it's not bad. Yeah. It's okay. bad. But now you, you got go. now you got a lot of cool new treasures to go explore. <laughs> yeah, that's the right answer. Um, I I'm very biased to the nineties, early two thousands, late eighties hip hop. Um, which by the way, my second question will be on, but Mikey has a question first. Uh what's your favorite console videos, video games? What's your favorite, uh, favorite console? Well, I, I usually play games on my PC for the most part. Oh, you're um, one of those. Yeah. <laughs> PC uh, Master Race, whatever. <laughs> it, it just, I, it's just, I, I don't know. I, I really love building. It's like it's like putting together like Legos, like building a computer. It's pretty cool. Um, I have to do but, that re- very soon. I mean, well, with the way the parts are now, like the price of them is going to be a while. Yeah, I don't, uh, it's another way that's going back anytime soon. No. It'd probably be cheaper just to get like a pre built now. But, right. Um, yeah, because yeah, if you try to buy individual, if you try to get a graphics card, you just triple the cost of your rig. <laughs> right, exactly. And and they can like the OEMs get it cheaper. So like it's, right. it's just it sucks, unfortunately. It sucks. <laughs> pre built <pre-built laughs> is the way to go now, which is wild. <laughs> Who would have thunk? Um, but the game the game I play the most guaranteed is probably civilization. Is it like a strategy? Oh, I play game? that. 
Yeah. Yeah, Civilization Six is the game I play the most. There's a new one. There's a new strategy game called Humankind, which is also really good. Um, but the game I've been playing recently is uh, uh, Elden Ring. Oh, have you broken anything in the house yet? <laughs> no, I'm actually pretty patient. I'm almost done with the game. Nice, nice. Well, guess what? I don't get to ask my second question because Haas <laughs> is here. So Big Haas is here. He's joined the show early today, which we love to see. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, Big Haas, four down territory. You get the last question for Juan. So what up, big homie? Get in character and get in the game. What's up, big doll? I see your shirt. What's up, fellas? What's everybody doing? How's everybody doing today? Good, man. Good. You got a Washington Commander shirt already? <laughs> he good. He good like that. I like it. I swear, Cobra I swear Commander. he got to do it's got to be a dude that fucking goes around his block in like a white van with no windows. So I was like, hey, yo, Haas, I got that new merch, dog. I got that new shit. I got that new shit, man. He always have the shit the day it drops. See, no, What's no, your no, hookup, no, man? No, no, y'all don't get the joke. Y'all don't get the joke. I, I see it's Cobra Commander. I get it. It's Cobra saying. Commander. We know. Right. I'm just saying, how you always be getting the freshest shit first? And you don't even be, hook, you don't even be telling nobody. I know somebody. No, I know. I told you, it's a white van that be pulling around his neighborhood, dropping off packages, just brown boxes full of shit. You know, you know, it's just I'm tired of Haas having the swag and not sharing it. I'm tired of it. <laughs> hey, you know how it's it gone is. on. Too, it's gone on too long. Washing, All right, you should. Your shirt should have said "Washing, Washing Rear Commando." <laughs> what? Of, anyway <laughs> wah, wah, wah. and it's a dad joke screw you waka, waka, waka. <laughs> Five it, it, it goes well with the pooter joke that i happened last time <laughs> oh god so uh I, I i all right Juan. uh are you excited about the new kenobi trailer that just came out today for the obi-wan kenobi show uh unfortunately you're gonna crucify me but i haven't seen the trailer oh i thought yeah. you do you like star wars i do like star wars but okay, the thing is, no that's but not the thing that is like, i haven't seen the trailer yet either yeah the thing is the you know the star wars i like is actually a, not even from like the movies like the, my favorite oh, the star wars story is like knights of the old republic the game oh, okay like that's a, that is a that good my game. favorite that was my favorite star wars story so like like it's just that the movies are just so underwhelming that i just lost hope at that point the, the game <laughs> need a, the ga a new hope he said <laughs> oh wow okay i got that one that was good, that was the, good. <laughs> yeah. you redeemed got yourself a, dutch we got uh, a question here uh early on the show from cdn ali man he says for you guys do you think putin would have waited four more years to do what he is doing if trump had won we'll address that in a second um but before we address that um Let's uh, keep Juan now. up here and let's. Uh, so, Juan, uh, give us your elevator pitch, man. Why are you running for Congress? Tell us a little bit about what your platform is. Yeah. So, um, you know, I actually got a lot better talking about myself recently because uh, I've done this so many times. So, you guys are lucky Good. that you're getting a more refined yeah. version of me. <laughs> oh, wow. You got the polished one. Well, we yeah. ordered the updated version. So, yeah, I'm glad that we got it. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, it was saying yeah, downloading right until the show started, and then we're like, "Oh, fine, <laughs> upload, download complete." Thank God. Yeah, exactly. exactly. You got the one three point one. You got the latest. You got the latest version. The latest yeah. version with all the patches. So, yeah. guys, if you guys didn't know this, guys listening, uh, make sure you hit the little eye that's right above the guest's head, and that'll let you know if the update is available. You got to hit the little mm -hmm. little dot. <laughs> um, but uh, so essentially. You know, I grew up most of my life in uh, in deep poverty, you know, like the actual classification for the Census Bureau, which is 50 percent or below the poverty line. Uh, and, you know, at the time, like my, my mom was a single parent. She had four kids. I was making somewhere like around like 12, maybe less or, or yeah, less than 12 a year, um, a little 12K a year. And it, it's mostly because if she's a single parent, she has one of two choices, either uh, work a lot and then not have enough time to spend with your kids and raise them or spend time with your kids and raise them and not have enough time to work a lot. And unfortunately, our society doesn't really have the infrastructure in place to accommodate people that are 
not really in a position to be stable by themselves. They don't have any kind of social welfare benefits. The United States is actually very much a backwater if you look at like its social programs compared to other developed nations. And you know, for a long time, of course, because I didn't understand the the structural forces that uh, that that allowed the environment for the uh, poverty that I was that I was experiencing. You know, at the time, it was these. When you live in the United States, it has a it has the kind of pretensity to make you believe that if you're poor, it's because like it's a moral failure, like a moral character problem. That you if, did something wrong. Yeah, exactly. That like if you don't have the, if you had a better of better moral character, then you would have more money. And it's usually like if so, oh, they they use they like to use the term lazy because it's a it's a catch all to ignore any kind of structural issues that prevent somebody from actual being an active participant in the economy. If people aren't like I I I personally believe that there's no such thing as a lazy person like the type of lazy person they're trying to perpetuate there's no there's nobody that wants to live a sedentary life if somebody lives a sedentary life it's because there are there are issues either physically or mentally preventing them from actually being an active part of the economy and instead of actually creating institutions that can help uh, alleviate those problems we just you know try to uh, uh just swipe it away create a uh, cast that cast uh, chastise them and create like a separate cast, like, you know, this person's lazy, they're not committed, they're, um, they're, they're slacker, that kind of thing. And, you know, it, it, and it's, it's just when, when you look at the stark differences in other nations like Finland, for example, and you see the kind of, the kind of, uh, structures that they have, the way they, uh, design their institutions and you see how, successful it is because a lot of like if you look at their prison system for example it was designed very much like ours um like 60 years ago and then they just we you know without knowing how it's going to work out they changed it to be more i mean a lot of people would say cozy from here because we have a punitive prison system but their prison system is designed for rehabilitation and it tries to create a normal life as much as possible because they want eventually to reincorporate them back into society. And when you see the successes, they bring their recidivism rate down from 70% to like, or close to 70% to 20% in like 40 years. It's, you know, like you see the, you see the results and uh, you know, it, it just looks like an entirely different world. And so um, I don't really see anybody running for Congress that, is trying to fix the the not instead of focusing on the symptoms of the problems they don't try to fix the core issue nobody even talks about the core issues so instead of like hoping for somebody to come and fix it you know like some kind of magnanimous benefactor to come and fix all our problems i figured i might as well just try to do it myself we'll just wait for homelander to show up he'll fix everything <laughs> yeah, he's very magnanimous um, <laughs> He'll and, help and, us. <laughs> and benevolent at the of course. <laughs> What's the worst um, thing to happen? Well, I appreciate that. And and actually it's funny that you say what you said because yesterday, unbeknownst to me, you were going to say that, but yesterday I sent out a tweet and That's basically it just said we we need to stop using and I'm sure you'll well, I'd like to see if you agree with this. We need to stop using the term successful. Um I'm sorry, we need we need to stop using the term hard work uh, as a proxy for the word success, right? Like, so when someone is successful, we basically, you know, like, oh, well, they must be, they must have worked hard. There, There is no correlation, there, no, there's no, there, there's no absolute correlation between working hard and being successful, nor does everyone who is successful have necessarily have worked hard, right? You've Parents could be rich and therefore you, you become rich, right? There are people who work super fucking hard their whole lives, but never achieve success, right? So, you know, like single mothers very frequently, like, like you talked about your own mom, fall into that group very, very often, you know, they work one or two jobs and, you know, they, 
What, what do you want? People will, well, well, you know, get a better job. Really? I hadn't thought of that. You know, <laughs> thank you. It, it just assumes people are stupid. So we really need to change that, you know, and I think that like we have a statement in the chat that, you know, definitely there are lazy people, but we, and of course that's true. Of course there's lazy people. I think the problem is though, is that we look at where someone is in their life and then we make that determination of whether or not that person had been lazy or had not been lazy without really any evidence outside of just what we saw that moment. Right. And that's negative. That, that's a negative thing about this. Country. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of really lazy people that inherited a shit ton of money. So does that make them successful because they got yeah. a ton of money? Yeah. Right. And, and also like, and, and like, what do we, what would you consider lazy? Cause like, you know, big house made a good point. Like a lot of things that you would consider lazy, there's, you know, some of the richest people in the world exhibit a lot of those characteristics and they're very successful. It's like, I don't think, you know, the, the, the classification of lazy is very arbitrary. And, you know, it, it, a lot of the times when they point to an example of somebody being lazy, there is a fundamental underlying issue to their sedentary um, uh, behavior. So, yeah, I, I think I that uh, in a humorous way, uh, in Living Color pointed that out a lot back in the day when they was, you know, oh, you only got three jobs, you lazy goat, you know, <laughs> and they were playing a Jamaican family that had five, six, seven jobs. So, you know, it depends on, on what the culture is, too, because, Dang. you know, in some cultures, it's, hey, you know, the mom stays home and, and doesn't do much and dad works two or three jobs. And so is she lazy if he passes away? And they fall on hard times because she has no experience in the work workforce at all. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's like what they did, what they did with the, you know, in the 80s with the welfare queens and the early 90s with the welfare queens, where they point to like these these people who are definitely you know, welfare queens, but then they attribute that those characteristics to anybody on welfare, right? Which is super unfair. Because yeah, but, uh, like makes it's just not the way the that rule. it you portray yes. the exception as the rule. Yeah, but right. the thing is also the way welfare is designed. Because trust me, like I live most of my life um, within that system. I can I, I understand intimately how it's designed. It's designed to create that kind of that kind of behavior because what it has it's it has a ceiling. So once you reach a certain amount of money, it strips away all of your benefits immediately. You don't get you don't have any kind of uh, leniency. To wean you off of it um, gradually, and so once that happens, you don't you no longer have the income to support yourself, so it knocks you back down to the level where right. you need that assistance again, and it creates right. that cycle over and over. Yeah, and I'm going to push back on the other comment that that Flow State made here. What he says is, he says at least the ones who inherited. I guess he's giving us that point. People who earn their nut are usually not lazy. Again, that might be true, but we 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 failed we fail to with, with the blanket characterizations to where we don't fail with, we don't fail to apply blanket characterizations for the opposite. Right. And we should be fair. I know people personally, and I see people very, very frequently within corporate America, you know, especially when it comes to things and I'm not r ripping on retail managers here at all. It's a respectable profession profession, but like, I know I see what my, what, with, with what Melissa does and, She'll say all the time, we have a store manager who's going to get promoted to director because his store did the best. And he's the worst manager that we have. Right. You know, we have like, we have 18 store managers. He is like got the lowest metrics. He's the worst at developing talent. You know, he's the worst at customer retention, but he just happens to be in a particular area where he, there's a lot of you know, this, whatever, I'm not going to out her where she lives, where she works, but, you know, in that particular industry, there's a lot of business and a lot of corporate accounts that go there. So they have the highest amount of numbers. Right. And the guy's a, a terrible manager right now. That's not, that doesn't necessarily mean that the guys, I don't, I don't know if the guy technically works hard or not, but his, the reasons why he's going to be promoted are not the reasons why someone should be promoted. And the people who've actually earned the promotion just don't, aren't fortunate enough to have that store, you know? Right. So, so there's always nuance, you know? Yeah, no, that's, that's actually a really good point. Like you're saying that, um, 
said we reward success, but since the metrics for success are so are, are already kind of like skewed, then uh, you know the the reward is not necessarily for the behavior that you want. So you know you don't know like the success could be because could be because of a fluke. It could be you know despite the person, not because of the person. Like we're not looking at the actual reasons why they're successful. We just look at the end result and then reward that instead. Right. That's exactly correct. And, and, and the last thing I'll touch on on this is because I don't want to steal your thunder, but like the, I get an argument with the wife all the time about this. She'll say that managers work harder than employees. Right. No. And I'm like, <clears throat> that's ridiculous. Now I understand mm -hmm. where she's coming from and to a degree because salaried managers, especially in some fields like HR and operations managers and stuff like that, they don't, they're, technically they're they're always at work like sales too i'm a salesperson i can tell you right now if my phone rings i gotta call them back as soon as we're done with the podcast right because like th th when people call you you have to be working 24 hours a day and there's a lot of positions where you do bring your your work home with you you bring the stress home you have to catch stuff up i totally get that right i'm not taking away from that at all but here's the question is mental work harder than physical work and it depends on the person. The hardest work I ever did was when I was working at for the moving company and I was carrying refrigerators literally on my back up the stairs in downtown Chicago and especially in places like Chinatown where you got these narrow ass stairways that barely are the size of the refrigerator. Yeah, I, I, work for you, yes, I, I completely, I completely. So you know what I'm saying, right? Mm -hmm. You're carrying all these boxes. It's fucking, it's either 10 degrees or 110 degrees. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> it's, it's there's really no you, you almost never find yourself working outside on a day when it's 65 and beautiful it's always raining or whatever right and like i would go home exhausted and yes i wasn't bringing my work home with me to the point where like i had to stress about the sales figures but i was stressing about my back hurting right and like we respect one more than we do the other and like i th that's not to dig on either profession they both fit a piece in our society but we tend to glorify one where we shit on the other one right and it's like to me they're equal pieces you know somewhat equal pieces of the pie and that's no. my soapbox there so yeah. the workers work harder than the manager every time all the time yeah and you know and also companies, companies you're, you're, create the environment oh sorry go ahead i didn't mean to cut you off no go ahead you're good go ahead you're the guest go uh, ahead. <laughs> i was gonna say that companies create the environment to uh, you know, look at some work to be more, uh, it to be better work, to be more real work and other work to be kind of like, you know, the, just the, the type of work that's menial because, you know, it's necessary for, you know, the existence of like the building or whatever they, right. they, they create, like they, they actually, um, the businesses themselves internally create that kind of different, uh, stratus of, of, uh, employee and, it, you know, when when really in reality, um, it, it wasn't always like that. There there were there were, you know, people who were janitors who had uh, lifelong friendships with people that worked, you know, within the building that they worked in. And they worked there for a long time because they were paid really well to maintain the building, and everybody had a lot of respect for their janitor. Like that's not some that was a reality that wasn't just not too long ago, maybe like in the '60s or so, and. Uh, it, you know, when companies decided that they wanted to increase profits by cutting wages and uh, driving down labor, they created that that more alienated type of menial labor to uh, basically create the the perpetual uh, unemployment to always fill in that labor when they need it. So, right, and it's I mean I. My only question for Mikey with his statement is this. When you say the employees work harder always, yeah. can you specify, like, so at what point in time do you become not an employee? Like, is a shift manager still an employee? When you have ownership. Uh, I, when, you, when you have uh, ownership, I would say. Yeah, I, because your okay. statement doesn't sound authentic, you know, like it, like it could possibly no, like, be true. Like, I'm, there's no, especially when we're talking about, like, like a retail store or some, like a manager, like there's a store director, and then like the department heads and then like the workers, the workers are always working harder than the people above them. Yeah. But I would say, I would say an employee is anyone that gets a wage who doesn't have any kind of ownership in the company, right. doesn't have a uh, incentive right. and in out, profits. And, and, and an hourly person that don't get a bonus, um, that 
has to has to be there at the job the same days that the boss has to be there. The workers are always there. They have to do the stuff when he goes home, when he goes home at five, and then they're there till midnight. Like it's like it's it's very unfair how we have things set up now. Especially when it comes to like big box stores and stuff like that. Small businesses are small businesses. They they run their themselves. But yeah, I'm not sure. I, I'm not. I'm not sure. I agree with that. And I'm going to tell you. I'm. I'm going to counterpunch that a little bit because I think that you have. To, I think that we shouldn't. We should just the same as we shouldn't um, characterize, you know, people who don't make good money with not being hard workers. We also shouldn't assume because we make that blanket characterization there, right? I think we also shouldn't assume that, like a a mid level store manager is just like sitting at the computer and, and playing with his dick all day and that every worker is busting their ass because you, ha- I think what is more true is you're going to have a spectrum of both, right? You're going to have employees who work harder than other employees. You're going to have managers who are better than other managers, right? So it's, it's the stereotype that I think is, is the thing that needs to change. But I think that if we're going to start breaking down in the nitty gritty and looking at like, well, this manager works hard. So therefore this manager works hard. That's not necessarily going to be true because you're going to have managers. One manager will work harder than the other, even within the same store. And one employee may, you know, dick around all day and go sit on his phone, phone on Facebook in the bathroom where another guy's busting his ass and making up for his work. Right. So we have to be I think we have to assess that more individually. Wouldn't you agree with that? No. And I don't feel like being fair either. I don't want to be fair. I don't want to be even keeled. Well, I would, I would the, say the people, that. Uh, the pe- Go ahead. Go ahead, Juan. Yeah, I, I would say that, um, you know, that's the kind of internal stratification that, that businesses like to create. That That's the kind of like divide and conquer tactic. I would say that they create an employees to prevent um, organization. Uh, yeah, that's I, I true. Would, I, agree I, I, that. I would say that the, the real stratification shouldn't be between the managers and the employees because they're both technically wage workers. I would say it is those who have ownership, who have stake in its profits, because those are the ones that make the yeah. decision to... Um, push down the cost of labor and you know to create and, and create this the system where they just funnel profits back into themselves by buying back their stocks and not investing to the real economy yeah and and as a as a executive in a company i can tell you that i don't work and again i'm always working where those guys aren't but I, when when we are there together on the clock those guys are doing a lot more work than I am. And I know that. So I try to make sure that I, that they know I appreciate that. And I buy them lunch and all this type of stuff, you know, and, and, and make sure I'm doing the, rep- the reports in the right way and finding ways that I, every possible way that I can to make, to take off of their plate and to make their job easier and to make sure that they're, they feel more rewarded for their work. Mm-hmm. Um, but they don't get to go to the lunch m- meetings, right. Where we know, and those, you know, at least once a month, we do a lunch once, I'm sorry, once a week, we do a lunch meeting. Those guys are out there working and we're, you know, having a beer and a pizza and talking about work, right? That's not hard work. It's cool. I like doing it, but it's, but it's not hard work. So like I, I make a concerted effort to try to involve them in that and say, Hey, you know, let's bring the foreman with once in a while. Let's bring the, you know, the the head rigger or the forklift driver or whatever on one of these and they kind of show them how we appreciate them as well and sometimes companies are like my company i work for now does a great job with this by the way um they're very receptive to it other companies i've worked for in the past they're not coming with us you kidding me the guy with the work boots on you know obviously they don't say it that way but <laughs> it's it's it, it's crazy um what's what do you think is the solution? Like, what? How does your platform, as a candidate, address this one? Well, um, of course, we have to we have to deal uh, deal with a lot of the like severe symptoms that have occurred because of the you know the you know, the, the current institutions. Um, some of the, some of these things are just too much that like we we have to deal with the symptoms before we can even deal with the root cause. Like, for example, healthcare is in dire states. Um, uh, our, uh, this is, this is an existential crisis, but you know, our, uh, right now, our climate, our climate projections are horrible. We're not even, uh, Biden says, Biden says he wants to get the U S to carbon neutral by 2050 when honestly the entire planet should be carbon neutral by 2050. If we even want to make any kind of uh, meaningful impact. He's not doing shit to do that either. 
He's yeah. just sitting there, and it, that's all word wordsmithing with Biden, don't you think? Uh, I mean, he's done a lot more, at least, um, than other presidents, to be honest. But it's nowhere near enough. It's not close. Like it, we need to have World War II production and green energy and get the entire planet by carbon neutral by 2050, or you know, we're not, or or, or we're not going to mitigate any of the worst effects of climate change in the by 2100, and it's going to be disastrous for our societies. Like, look, look at the look, it, people are doing really well accepting. Um, uh, refugees uh from from ukraine right now because of the conflict and they're accepting a lot of refugees and they're doing a good job of that but um there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, uh reasons why that uh you know the that refugee crisis is going so well like if you contrast it with you know the middle east or um Asian, or African so, yeah. refugees like you, you'll see the kind of the, the kind of chaos just a small refugee crisis can create Imagine a refugee crisis like that, you know, the size of tens of millions of people when now certain areas of the planet are no longer habitable. Uh, you know, it's going to collapse societies and we're not going to do much to mitigate that unless we have the entire world carbon neutral by 2050, not just the United States. And, you know, um, so, so like those are really vital issues that we need to deal with right now. Also, um, you, you know, the, the United States can uh, unilaterally uh, like the president can just cancel student debt. And that has been a unique crisis that only the United States has this kind of student debt crisis because most of the world subsidizes their education for their society. Like the United States is really, the United States and the UK are the, wor are the worst at this. The UK is actually more expensive tuition in the United States, which is surprising to me. I thought, you know, I, I don't know how you could be more expensive than the United States, but the UK <laughs> manages that somehow. And um, they try really, hard. they try really hard. <laughs> yeah. say, you got to wake up early and study all <laughs> night. To even, to know, to even more money for no, no, you, you got to wake up early to work all day to afford it. Right? <laughs> uh, but, um, you but you know, the, 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 the student debt crisis in the United States, even though the UK is more expensive, the student, they don't have a student debt crisis like we do. It's very really unique to the United States and Brian can just cancel it. Um, a lot of it is just interest anyway, a lot of the cost of it. So it's a lot lower than like the trillion dollars that people say it is. So, um, you know, there, there's some symptoms that we have to deal with, but the core issues, the core primary issues are the fact that we need to have, we need to make sure that um, we have uh, people that live prosperous lives, no matter where they come from. And, you know, we just have to have the institutions for that. That means public housing. That means um, uh, good public transportation. That, that means, a, a, a good minimum wage that is a baseline where people cannot pay less than that amount. Um, so that way you can make sure everybody gets a decent wage. So, you know, th there are certain institutions you need to create to make sure that everybody can live prosperous lives. And that's essentially the end goal. But also you have to deal with like the symptoms that are already there that are too dire that you can't ignore. Hey. What do you... What do you think of um, so I'm, I'm taking you you support free uh, tuition free community college? Um, yeah, exactly. Well, not, not just community college, um, that, public universities as well. OK, that's where I was going. So that you, you support uh, public universities as well being free. Right, exactly. Of course, private universities wouldn't be free because, you know, I'm not, no one's going to pay for Harvard. You want to spend that that Harvard, you spend you spend that amount of money for the access and the and the um, uh, networking, not so much for the education. I think we should have, like, another, you know, it, it's funny I used Finland before for the criminal justice uh, example. Uh, I'll use Finland again for the education example. They have an incredible education system. They basically made it so every school is, uh, ha has the same standard of education. So every school, like there's, there's no, there's no top universities in Finland. They, they all have the best possible education that they can provide. And uh, teachers have to go through a rigorous um, system to like, to, to become teachers. It, they, they create the curriculum. They don't, they're not somebody who receives curriculum from a higher body. The teachers are the ones that create and implement the curriculum. They have to be extremely well educated, and it's very hard to become a teacher over in Finland. And it's uh, their their education system is based completely on educating children 
And the best part is that they only go to school half the time because they say that they want children to have a childhood. So they don't want to spend all their time in school. So they will go half the time that people do in the United States. <laughs> What a, what, a, what a novel concept, giving kids time to yeah. be kids. What do you know? Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Let the children be, be children. children. And, 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 the, and the results, it, it, they, they compete with East Asian countries that use extreme austerity to get to the same level as Finland. Like they have very strict, very strict, rigorous systems. For their education like you you are heavily penalized if you get nothing less than perfect scores type of very strict right. systems and they and finland competes with them uh, you know when they did the last international uh competition was like in 2006 or something like that um they they compete with them very like, like they're neck and neck and finland goes to school for half the time there's they don't they don't take a standardized test by the time, like at the end of middle school equivalent for the United States, and and wow. and you know they, they it's a lot more, uh, it, it's a lot more freer, more liberal, and it's and it's and it's a much better uh, result than I would say even like the East Asian educations, and they're always praised. So. I heard that. Not sure where Dutch went. Probably had to go deal with something. Um. Mm -hmm. Has any questions about his uh, platform? Where do you stand on two uh, A issues? Uh, on, on which one? Like, uh, uh, where do you second stand? Amendment. On, oh, second uh, amendment. Background oh. checks and registration and things like that. I mean, I would say that the the best the best system would be kind of like what Canada has, you know, where um, you have to you they have rigorous background checks. Um, it takes, it takes, I, I forgot the exact time, but they have, um, a, a periods where you have to wait before you can finish the process to prevent any kind of like immediate, um, uh, uh, passionate purchases. And they also, uh, make it so you have to renew your gun license. It's kind of like a driver's license. So you have to keep over and over again, renewing the gun license. Um, and, uh, I, I'm not sure if they do have a mental health check, but we, I think should definitely make that mandatory as well. And the government should. So we have versions. It. Yeah. We have versions of the first two where, you know, like if you want your concealed carry, you got to go through, I mean, I, it's like a weekend or something like that, but, and then you have to go through renewals for that. And your, your FOI card expires, but I definitely think that there should be some sort of psychological exam or psychological assessment Right. Before you're allowed to, you know. Yeah, if, if you want to make it constitutional, we can make it so the government subsidizes it. That's perfectly fine. I don't, I don't mind that. But there has to be, in my opinion, a men, uh, like a, a a mental examination as well. If you want to get a gun license, I think everybody should. Um, like, if I, I'm not against people having um, weapons, the biggest the biggest problem with with guns in the United States is not necessarily Second Amendment, but gun culture. Like, there are other countries that have extreme levels of uh, ammunition for their percentage of the population like switzerland for example and the th well switzerland they also have like a cons you have the, the conscriptory force like they conscript right. you to be in the army but um but so so a lot of them are military trained but a lot of them have a high percentage of weapons but they don't have a lot of the um uh unique uh, mass shootings or the gun violence, gun violence like the the, the, yeah. the the highest gun violence has to do with poverty a lot of the problems there are perpetuated by poverty but um just like here think, um, just like here just like i here. think yeah, yeah. No, no 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 i'm saying here here like the the and the highest the highest percentage of the gun violence here is perpetuated by poverty mm -hmm. the, the the but the united states does have a unique issue with mass shootings um that you don't really see in other countries and even in countries like switzerland where they have um, a really high population with with weapons, you don't see that issue because there's no there's no uh, gun culture in Switzerland. They, they don't take Instagram pictures of their guns and and you know like show it off and it's it's more than a tool. Like they use it like, like as, as an extension of themselves. It's, yeah. it's they, they don't all, like they say tools don't kill people, but it's no longer a tool anymore. Like you, you, you glorify yeah. it. That's the that's the big issue. But that's what I, my favorite issue. thing is the. Uh... You remember the stick families that that stickers that they used to put on cars? Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, now it's the gun 
stick family. Yeah. It's a big, huge gun, a little bit smaller gun, all these little guns. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's like it's, come it's, on, it's, man. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And the yes. thing is, like, you know, that's a cultural issue, but we can't you can't really legislate something like that. You know, you no. can't legislate culture away. You have that's something you have to you know, you have to do with education. It's a longer process. It's it would take some right. generations to yeah. get that out of people. Exactly. If guns are if guns so so I have a question for you. If guns are a constitutional right, which they are, kinda. Like it depends on again, this is, goes for back now. to how you how you read well, it goes back to how you read the Second Amendment, right? So right. But the it's, Supreme Court is the one who like interprets it. Yeah, yeah, and and they they've been interpreting it differently for the last 30 years, 40 years than they had before, prior to that. Um and, and really gun culture started under Reagan, I would argue. Um yeah. but shouldn't guns be free well i mean they say that you can have a regulated try to um, offer so. you try to offer the guns yeah like well, they, 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 you, they get an AK-47, you get an ak-47 you get an ak-47 you get a 22 these caliber are, piece shooter. these are the these are the same people who can't fucking put their cart back when they're grocery shopping you want to give all of them ak-47s that's it. well i mean if if if, if it is if it is and this is why I have some issues with with the reading of the Second Amendment, especially as it pertains, because I think it's very clear that the Second Amendment is a follow up to Article three. And I, I believe it's Article three where it talks about co how Congress is responsible, is, is mandated with forming, you know, it, uh, the Navy and for um, the Army every two years. Right. Because the Army is like it doesn't give us the right to bear ships like aircraft carriers because that they knew was going to be a permanent function of the federal government but the issue is is that the states wanted to have their own state militias and they wanted to do to, so to protect their sovereignty because they viewed themselves differently as at the time than they do now so i'm not yeah. going to get into that rabbit hole but yeah, that was a completely different time like before the lincoln unionization that created like the Current nation state that we live in now. Well, one 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 could argue that the whole constitution was an entirely different time, and we we should maybe do like yeah. other countries do and update our. Constitution Jefferson from said time that we should time. do it every couple, like three generations. We should like be uh, <laughs> amending the constitution. Well, he said you should yeah. change the government, but like we should amend the constitution. Like we should. <laughs> and you know. and the, the 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 fact is is that the the framers of the constitution were were split on this, right? So they didn't, a lot of them didn't trust the federal government because they had issues with King George. And a lot of them didn't, frankly, didn't trust the people. And the evidence for that is in the Electoral College, right? They, they literally implemented the Electoral College because they didn't trust the people to make the right decisions. So that's why yeah, we I mean, had electors. They, they, didn't, they really didn't like democracy whatsoever. They wanted um, the landowners to make the decisions. And it was a big fight to get even... Um, you know, the democratic elections for senators. And then, you know, of course it was women's suffrage. I mean, and there's still, and there's still like issues with, with uh, voting rights and, and democracy in this country. Like it's, it started out very anti-democratic and we've been fighting to make it more democratic. Yeah. And people, that's a great point. People forget about that. Um, but as far as the second amendment goes, like I, I'm prefacing my statement by the, saying that people read the the people's interpretations of 2a are different the one that counts is the supreme court i get that but i don't have to agree with the supreme court yeah. right like republicans don't agree with the supreme court on roe v way so i don't have mm -hmm. to agree with it you know on um i don't heller feel... right i don't have to agree with you with the supreme court's the heller decision or any of the other decisions right i get to look at things for myself and critically think yeah. um but but i think that if if we're looking at like voting is a right and if you want to say that guns are the same right as voting the same level of of, of right then technically we they, guns should be supplied by the state to anyone who wants one you know and there really would be no but and, and i don't have a problem people having weapons i own i own weapons i just I don't think you need 13 AK 47s that can, you know, well, tell with, me with how many AK 47s I can have. Mm -hmm. My freedoms. Yeah. My and, freedom. Yeah. And, and I mean, mean, well, where's the line though? Like, I mean, do I, can I, can I buy an anti aircraft gun? And we have a line it? when it comes to Muslims in this country. We do not have a line. When
when it comes to <laughs> guns that I can put in my pantry instead of Cheerios. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, the thing the thing is this, like the the United States is literally the most secure country on the earth. They have no external threats. We have two oceans on our on our east and our west and the you know, Canada and Mexico are not military threats. So we have no we have no military threat anywhere near our nation. And there's no nation or combination of nations that can cross the ocean and attack us. We're impervious to invasion. We don't ever have to worry about it. So the gun, so the guns you're using are for the uh, are for the government. But the government is, at the very moment, democratic. And if for whatever reason the gov- the government stopped being democratic, there would be you you would it would not be difficult to to get guns. We have uh, we already have a lot of guns in our country. Right. Like, it's not, it wouldn't be difficult to find guns if you needed a fight. Like it's not. Is is right. you, you know you don't have to have a gun on you twenty four seven if that you know if, if if that is your concern which is not you shouldn't be since we still have democratic process unless you're driving community. a Dodge vehicle in uh, the Chicago land area because they are the most stolen right now in Chicago <laughs> you got yeah, a Durango and, you're in trouble yeah and the the so again we have another comment from the chat where it says um, shall not be infringed duh. So I think what he meant to say. Oh is God, they bring that up US. all the time. So, so, so I'm going to argue with that, and and I'll let I want to know what Juan thinks of that too. And again, this comes from a gun owner. I'm not anti weapon per se, right? But the it doesn't just say shall not be infringed. Like people cherry pick it and they read the second sentence and they whine about where commas were placed. You know, it never mentions the word citizens. Americans or people at all in the second amendment. It mentions the word state with a capital S. Okay. So in order to maintain, and I'm not quoting it probably exactly here because I don't have it in front of me, but in order to maintain a a free state, the security of a free state, the right to bear arms shall not be infringed. The state, not Joe who lives on Elm street, is not mentioned in that it does not mention citizens at all oh, now part of the state it are you because <laughs> I, you know I'm that, just saying what because, because where that but that's the thing where in the constitution does it say that i am part of the state because i can leave the state anytime i want i'm not bound to the state right i don't if, if i move from indiana to new or to louisiana i give up my citizenship in indiana I am then a citizen a ra- of resident, Louisiana, yeah. of Indi- of, of Louisiana mm-hmm. right? I do not give up my American citizenship. Those are two markedly different things. So, you know, it's like people say, what's well, the most um, direct amendment? It's two and a half sentences. Or it's two sentences long or a sent- I don't even think it's two sentences. It's one sentence with a bunch of fucking commas, you know, and the, well, the comma was placed here. I'd love it's to see how you read people, Dr. Seuss. I, you know, it's, it's funny to me how people in one situation will tell you, don't don't try to talk to me about, you know, all high and mighty. And then they become English professors or, you know, when it when it comes to something else is the dichotomies and this, the, the, the cognitive dissonance and mental gymnastics people go through to justify di- their ideologies is insane to me. It's it, reading, reading, reader. Juwan, I don't know if you'd agree with this or not, but readers of the Constitution, and we are guilty of this too on this show, right? I will, I will say, we're not. I'm not absolving us from this. Where are my hands going? I, this is weird. <laughs> must this have new, a bunch of boogers on your hands. The, the, the new way screen. that they're doing these virtual backgrounds is like really weird now. The, it's the weird because this... you have a green screen, so it should be yeah. so much more. Accurate. They didn't used to do that. Um, but anyway, he's an like, alien. He's got green blood. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't do it to my head. It only does it to my hands. That's weird. Hmm. But the but like my people, the interpretation of the um of of the constitution is just as cherry picky and um changes in meaning from one person to the next as the bible or as the quran right yeah. like it's people do the same thing with the constitution as they do with the religion they read it and th- and I'm not absolving our us from that you know it's like but we everybody does this and it's like 
it's crazy to me. Like yeah, one thing, one thing that's that I, I've never agreed with is like deifying the founding fathers and create and like creating the and thinking that the constitution is like scripture. It was created to be amended for a reason. It was created to be changed. And the when you know, and and the and the Second Amendment also says well-regulated militia. It doesn't necessarily say that you know citizens have the right to bear arms. So. Um, but if these citizens want yeah, to I don't believe it says, and Tim says it says people in there. He says I'm wrong. I don't believe I'm wrong. All right, yeah, I'm it says, it it says well-regulated militia in the second. Amendment. Yeah, and, so, and, and, and exactly. Um, and the thing is, uh, on the screen, Doc. He's reading the oh. he's reading the new new international version of the Constitution. <laughs> yeah, the King James I, version. No, I, I use the King James <laughs> Constitution myself. I'm <laughs> sure. Where, yeah, where's, where, where's, where is it at? Okay, a well-regulated... Okay, Read the whole so thing. The, There's audio right. listening. Well, I, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms should not be in French. Okay, so I, I stand corrected. I didn't re remember the word people being in there. Never, never, ever. Right, but no, but like you said, but like you said the interpretation of where the comma picture. is and everything, you can interpret that in a lot of different ways. That's the problem. Like we need, if 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 we want to have rules... And the constitution can be amended. You yeah. should amend it to be more clear, to have a, a, a more, you know, a, a, an actual and, understanding of what you're right. And from. even, and you're right. And even in that, so, so, okay. Jason retracts the fact that I, I, that I missed the word there. So I'm wrong. However, does bear mean own? Or does it mean hold? And and that's what I'm saying. Like, from the like Earth if they really right. wanted to do it, then they should have said, "People can own well, as many guns as they want." And bear, keep. Yeah, and but but they bear. could have just wrote in the Constitution, "We believe in the in the right for people to own and bear arms, exactly protect themselves, and have whatever they want." Once in a while. But they didn't write it that way, that's and they right. wrote it clearly as a function of militia. Right. Right. I don't know. At least that's the that's the intention. That was the intention of the. Well, the three percenters uh, consider themselves a militia. But I mean, proud boys the, themselves as a Are they are they well regulated by the state? <laughs> well, the state. possibly, possibly. <laughs> depending on depending on who's in control at the moment. And that's the thing is, like people people have different interpretations of it. And like they'll say, well, like you literally can have probably 30 different definitions of what it is and every person who has one and again guilty here too every person who has one thinks that theirs is right and everybody else's is wrong you know so it's like i i, I don't i don't understand it like i'm not and, and again i own guns i'm not trying to take people's guns i just don't think you need 55 ak-47s and you know we regulate fertilizer for a reason. You know what I mean? I can't have a, a air, anti-aircraft gun in my front yard. You but anyway, go out there and, and you can't go in, 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 uh, and you don't want to. You don't want to buy up all of the all of the Sudafed either. Yeah, you don't want to. You don't want to tank <laughs> yeah. to, to mow your lawn. <laughs> well, maybe I do want to tank to mow my lawn. It would be a lot quicker. <laughs> but that. All right, so let's move on to another top. Uh, Haas, which topic would you like to move us to? We got a. Uh, about five minutes left before we have to we talk about the, 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 the if you're a sports fan, Juan, no, we're about, about we're talking the, uh, to Juan <laughs> about campaign issues. Jesus Christ, oh, okay, he already asked think what I, the I, fuck. it's my turn. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm the one that came up with the guns. No, when we move yeah. to the second half of the show, we can talk. This is Juan's show, all right. We got a QP carousel to talk about. Yeah, so, my I, turn, I, Patreon, because all right, so, um. I have this one small little quest and I just I'm looking for candidates to help me with it. Will you help me tax the church? Um yeah, I mean honestly, I think that the that the church obviously engages in political action and the tax free was um what was uh, uh dependent on if they don't have any political involvement and so I think the church should be taxed. My I man. like this guy. I like this guy already. Mm -hmm. How, let me get his link for his campaign contribution. It was conditionary. Like the money, yeah. the, the, the free tax was conditionary in the fact that I wasn't politically involved. And there's there's mountains of evidence of them getting politically involved. So it oh, was a condition. There, we, we've seen videos of 
preachers in the pulpit telling you if you don't vote for x y or z right, exactly. orange person you are not a christian exactly exactly so like they they lose their condition that's it's it's that simple like this there shouldn't be any there shouldn't be any other argument about it oh twitch is being fucky well. they're saying um uh, just real quick uh healthcare um do you support a I'm, I'm sure you support a, a, a form of universal health care, Medicare for all, whatever you want to call it. Um, but like, what's your path to get there? Do you think that it should be do, that we should start by having, um, you know, a public option or just get rid of all the public options right away? From what you've looked at, what do you think would be the most effective transition mode to get yeah, to? I, I think it creating public option, if like you can do it immediately, it would be um, beneficial, but it's doomed to fail. The problem with the public option is that it creates a subsidized healthcare um, next to duplicative service of competing private options. So the private options are going to incentivize healthy people to not use the public option by probably like giving them money, for example, like rebates or something. They'll, they'll find some ways to incentivize young healthy people to use their healthcare because they never have to go to doctors if they don't get sick. So they don't ever have to worry about spending. And then they will push all the people who are sick to the public option, increasing the cost of the public option, but not getting the support they need from the health people being in the same pool. And so like you just create a spending pit and it's going to collapse and you're never gonna be able to maintain it. It's doomed to fail. Like the public option shouldn't be a thing other than like a very momentary like band-aid for a much bigger problem. Like we need uh I would say like Bernie Sanders Medicare for all system is good because it prevents private institutions from creating duplicative service that the government creates. That way, uh, there's no, you know, you don't, there, there's no, it, everybody's in the same pool. Everybody's under the same healthcare and it's much easier to subsidize it and make it cheaper for everybody if everybody's spending into one massive pool instead of splitting everybody up. Um, I appreciate that. I, I gotta segue us away real quick. Um, and by the way, no, I don't lose because I read Hamilton's Federalist paper. It disagrees with what you guys both said. Um, anyway, we'll talk about the Second Amendment later. The um, uh, city and Ollyman has a question. So Canadian, uh, the Canadian Ollyman. Yes, I'm reading what it says on the screen. I uh, so Ollie, Ollie, Ollie wants to know. Uh, so Juan, we'll start with you with your thoughts. Do you think Putin would have waited? Um, at, at this time he's he's adding the context of four more years um, to uh, to do what he's doing if Trump had won. Um, so let's talk about that for a few minutes. Uh, what are your thoughts? Do you think that we that if Trump had won the election in 2021 that we would be talking about an invasion in Ukraine right now? I think I think it would have gone much better for Putin if Trump had won. Like I think the what, what Biden did. Uh, with his intelligence apparatus was pretty, was pretty really, I, I'm not the, like, I, 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 I was the first person to criticize Biden. Like, like, there's a lot of things. Oh, that we get I, on through here. There's, yeah, there's a lot of things that I, I honestly didn't think he would perform well in this kind of situation. But what he did was he, he, when he got intelligence, he immediately declassified it and told everybody exactly what was happening. Every like they, when they saw um, for months when they saw Russia moving troops to the border, building structures, command control centers, or like that, they were immediately telling everybody, and also their allies appreciated because they got the scoop right away, and it kind of unveiled um, Russia and immediately showed exactly what they were planning. And so when Russia was found out, they just had to they had no choice but say we're not doing that. And so as soon as as soon as they invaded, they lost all credibility because they immediately had started saying that they weren't doing it. And if and let's say if if Putin saw that and then actually didn't invade, one, they save Ukraine from being invaded, and two, you actually don't hurt the intelligence apparatus because a lot of people already have a lot of distrust for it because of like Afghanistan and Iraq. They have a lot of distrust for the intelligence apparatus, so you're not going to do that much more damage anyway. Like it's not going to be that much bigger of a hit and ukraine doesn't get invaded or if putin does do it then you know you gain a lot more you gain a lot more uh, uh credibility for their intelligence apparatus and also uh you force putin in a tight position so i don't think that 
decision would have been made if Trump was president at the time. I think uh, Trump would have not said anything. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Putin would have uh, uh, amassed forces um, in a way where nobody knew, and they would have much better success in invading Ukraine. And I don't think that um, I don't think that uh, because of Trump's frayed, to put it mildly, relationship with NATO and the EU, I don't think that he would have been able to oh, yeah, marshal to those, the coalition. Yeah. that coalition to yeah. support Ukraine like Biden did. I agree. And I, I think that the 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 funny thing is that so if you look at this, um the moment we pulled out of so so let's go back. Trump, I forgot when he said it. When did he say it? November, October, November, something. He set the the date in May. Or I believe it was originally March, and then moved to May, if if memory serves. Um as to when we would withdraw from Afghanistan. Um, when we move, when we withdrew from Afghanistan, Trump basically had pushed that ball down the court a little bit. Right. And at the time we didn't really think about this, but I'm thinking about it now and maybe I'm wrong, but if you look at what happened, the moment we moved out of Afghanistan and obviously all the tragedy that happened there that we we don't pay attention to as much as we do Ukraine. I wonder why. Um, mm. Is th th Russia started mobilizing immediately? Mm -hmm. Like I think it was a week later they started mobilizing after we were out. So that tells me something, right? There's a signal there. Just our presence with those eight or nine thousand troops or whatever it was. I don't remember the exact number. Just our presence in Afghanistan there was holding them at bay. We, I, I never even put a thought into that before that us being there w had any effect on Russia. I it wasn't smart enough to connect those dots, but apparently it was because they moved right away, right? They're like, oh, big worm gone, let's go. That I mean, big I, worm I, gone, right? I, I think, you know, I think, so I think it'd be hard for uh, Russia to invade Afghanistan because the way it's designed the country, it's a giant, they, they're, uh, oh, they tried country. it before. Well, well, no, yeah, what I'm saying, they, like, they Afghanistan is them. really near to that area, right? Like, Afghanistan's right. super close to Ukraine. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't touch it, but it's we're right in that same area. And well, it, the Caspian Sea separates them is pretty large. Right. And as soon as we left, though, then they started mobilizing down to the border, right? So, like, to me, that speaks some volumes. So it's like, and again, I, I could be looking at nothing here, and it could be a nothing burger, right? Um, it just seems odd to me, the timing. And if you, I, I think you could make a, an argument that Trump, that, that maybe this would not be happening right now if Trump was still in office, but mm. not because of the reasons why you think. Um, not because Putin's motives would have been any different, but like he... I think it's I think that we are probably more the focus of this than Ukraine is. I think he's clearly posturing for the United States. And I I do think that it's plausible to think that he looks at Biden as being uh, the right wing will characterize it as weak. I would characterize it as apathetical to Russian interests because Biden has never had a good relationship with Putin. That's pretty well documented where Trump had, you know. A sweet lovey dovey relationship. He had a, with Putin. Uh, he he had had a pee pee tape. He had the uh, the small s in the yeah. ds. Relationship. I have I, mean, I, I, I have video of Trump being peed on by a Russian prostitute. I know very much what's happening. Yeah, I mean, like, I'll be honest. I don't I don't know what Putin's um, intentions are fully because if you look at if he if his intentions like if his complaints of NATO were true, if this action would immediately make NATO stronger. So of course, like that was probably just a smoke screen for his true intentions. Cause if he, if he really cared about NATO doing this will make NATO much worse. So, um, I, I don't really think that was his in true intentions or at least not his primary intention. Um, and if his intention was absorbing Ukraine, uh, like he would have to like try to install a, a public government kind of like in Belarus that is supportive of Putin. Um, that was completely destroyed as soon as Biden started 
um, you know, uh, telling everybody about the invasion and everybody was warned and they created this national fervor, this national fervor against Russia. So like that was killed as soon as before Russia even set boots on the ground. So at this point, at, like re there's really no other, like there's, there's no other, there's nothing else he can do. I, I don't really, I think his intention at this point is to try to get as much as he can, try to use that as leverage to cut his losses and, you know, try to get as much tactical victory as possible to try like as save as much face as possible because there's no other objective. Like there's no other, there's nothing else you can gain. Yeah. I, I do worry though. Do you share my like concern on this that I think that the sanctions, we have to be careful with them though, because I don't believe they're going to hurt the oligarchs as much as they're going to hurt the people in Russia. Is that a statement that you would agree with or do you, yeah, do you I would, I would say something? I would say generally that's true. The way we've been applying them um, has definitely created a devastating effect for the people there, and um, you know they they're going to be suffering for like even even at, if we reverse everything right now, the impacts that we've already created is going to create a lot of suffering for the Russian people. And though it does, the, the the oligarchs are massively impacted as well. It's just that we it, our it wasn't targeted. We more like carpet bomb them. And, and last question, do you, I don't know if you've seen all this conversation with the U.S. and a lot of these guys, kind of socialists and communists are talking about we shouldn't be involved with NATO, um, you know, Putin's right, all this type of jazz. Where are you at on that? Um, like, what are your thoughts as far as that whole, that, with the Assad militia and all this stuff? Where, where, where do you come in on that conversation? Right. Well, um, if you want to, if you want to say NATO is illegitimate, I mean, there are some fair arguments that you can create about that, you know, with the USSR gone, what is, you know, what is the point of NATO if it was against the USSR gone? Why is it now? Why is it still there? Like those are legitimate arguments you can have. Um, but the, uh, I, I would say the, the way Russia has been conducting itself even after the fall of the Soviet Union demonstrates. And if you look at Putin's speech, uh, how he considered Ukraine as property, it kind of demonstrates that you know they have they have legitimate fears of being invaded by a hostile force and also there's the question of a uh, national sovereignty if a nation wants to be part of a military alliance and that should be their decision and we shouldn't create a precedent where another nation can dictate that for them so and, and i personally am not against nato i think that um nato creates a a uh it, it creates a, a, a an environment where it prevents war. Actually, like Putin is going to think twice about invading Poland after Ukraine because Poland's in NATO, where he didn't think twice about invading. He's gonna think three times about that. Exactly, like the, the, it create it, it prevents war in in, in a meaningful <laughs> way. Um, I mean, if you, you could, there are there are negatives, of course, like arguments of like it's it's been acting very offensive as well, like in the invasion of Iraq. Um, you know, that, that was a very offensive interpretation of article five yeah, for sure. Was, yeah. So like, it, you know, there, well, there was no invoking of article five on, on, on the Iraq thing though. Article five has only been invoked one time and that oh, was oh, yeah, after 9-11. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, yeah. Sorry. I mixed it up. My mistake. Um, but like, but, 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 you know, you could, yeah, you, you could argue though that Afghanistan, it wasn't, you know, they were, it was it there were Saudi Arabian pilots there and it wasn't really Afghani that did it. And uh also on top of that, like it wasn't the nation of Afghanistan. So like you're, you're you know, there's it, the interpretation is kind of loose. It was used very offensively, um, just because you know the United States was attacked. So there, right. there is you know, there is arguments against NATO um that are fair, but I think ultimately at the end of the day, it does a lot more to prevent war than it does to be a, an offensive uh, uh force. Yeah. And I mean, what I find also interesting is that these people who are critical of NATO never mention the CSTO. Like they, 90% of the time, they don't even know what I'm talking about, you mm -hmm. know? And it's like, and CSTO has an article three, which is exactly the same thing as our article five. And you know, it's, so is CSTO quite as imperialistic? Maybe not, but yeah. like, I mean, it was, it was all they're right there. Soviet states anyway. So like, it's basically yeah. like, just themselves really <laughs> yeah it's the it, it the, they are way more influential to the csco than the us is to nato and that's not to say the us isn't influential to nato because they certainly are 
Mikey, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I didn't say anything. Oh, I thought you were trying to. Okay. So um, we'll wrap this up um, and then we'll go into the second hour of the show. Uh, Juan, if you would, let's give Juan center stage. Um, we're going to play another game with you. <clears throat> and uh, we're also going to uh, ask you to tell people where they can find you. So let's do that first for anyone who wants to sort support your campaign or find out more about you. Where can people yeah. do that? Everybody can find me at Juan number four Congress. That's all my social media. My website is Juan number four Congress.com. So everything on social media is, is you can find me on that. Um, and, you know, of course, I, uh, the, the big, the most difficult part for me is actually uh, fundraising because I hate asking for money, especially growing up in poverty. It sucks. Like, I, I, money. Don't worry. Has, Mikey will do it for you. Mikey, <laughs> can you ask for money for Juan? <laughs> Give it up. <laughs> Give up the bucks. Yeah, money, money, money is very valuable to me specifically because like I had so little of it, so it's hard for me to ask people for money. But of course, because there's really no other way to win for Congress, you know, if you know whatever, of course, whatever anybody can give up, the mo the most amount of money that's possible that they can donate, then they should if they if they think that I'm a good candidate because fighting Carlos Jimenez is going to be. Uh, very difficult. He used to yeah. be the mayor of Miami. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. Spend 30 seconds and tell us why you're a better candidate than Jimenez. Yeah, I mean, Carlos Jimenez is the worst, is literally the embodiment of the worst type of candidate. He um, doesn't really care necessarily about um, anything else other than benefiting himself and gaining profit. He would he would support Hillary Clinton if it benefited him. He would support and he's Trump a Democrat, right? No, he's a Republican. Oh, he's a Republican. Okay. Yeah, but but like he's like but he's voted for Hillary Clinton before. Like he doesn't. It doesn't really matter. There's no really ideology to him. It's whatever whatever would benefit him most is what he does. And he has, um, for example, like uh, he right hours after the January 6th insurrection, he voted to nullify the votes of uh, of Arizona and or Pennsylvania to try to turn the election because it would benefit him. He doesn't really care about democracy. He doesn't really care about um, our, our fundamental values, and he did, and and all he cares about. Oh, he was is, one of those. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. He, he all he cares yeah. about is profit. That's all he really cares about. And um, you know, growing up in poverty, it let me understand the fundamental issues with our society. I eat the same type of foods everybody else eats. I sleep where they sleep. I struggle like they do. So I understand the issues they have, and I'd be much better at solving them. Have you have you gotten any assistance at all from the DCCC? No, none at all, really. <laughs> Actually, there there has been um, uh, one person who has found me himself and emailed me, but no institutional help whatsoever. Okay. All right. Well, let's support Juan and uh, make sure we at least voice his campaign and get the the, the message out that he's out there. Um, and in the and in the meantime, let's find out who he wants to snap away. Uh, we're going to play another game with you. It's called Prank One, Marry One, Snap One. You've probably played a similar game to this in your life. <laughs> um, we're going to give you uh, three people, and you are going to prank call one. You're going to marry one, and you're going to snap one away like, like Thanos. Thanos. And why do we say <laughs> snap, Mikey? Uh, terms of service, we would never threaten actual or pretend violence on anybody because that would be <laughs> against the rules. And we I love rules. We and, and suggest uh, anything of the Randy sort. As well. We we are no. we are raging Democrats, and we love being told what to do by the system. <laughs> so we will we will succumb and suck the teat of the terms whoa, of service. Whoa, with some father uh, beans. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, wow. House. Princess Amadala. Oh, oh he okay. Princess Star Amidala Wars. from okay. Star Wars. All right, Mikey. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to. F I got to figure out her last name. You go ahead. All right. So we're going. We're apparently going with fictional characters. You don't have to go with fictional. Do what you <laughs> no, do. No, I'm going to stick but... with it. It's easier that way. I'm going to oh, go with. Here, um, I got mine. I got mine. All right. You watch one. You watch sports at all? I don't. Damn it. Never mind. Go ahead, Dutch. <laughs> Lieutenant Uhura, Star Trek. I don't know that character. You never watched the original Star Trek? Okay. No. Um, that's a first. I didn't think you'd say no to that. Uh, <laughs> that was seven of nine. 
Zendaya. How about? Yeah, let's do. Okay, that, there's Mikey. Are, are, more are, are, than I watch. Are movies. you picking Zendaya from like Spider Man No Way Home or just oh, no. Zendaya what's, first? What's 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 her face uh, from? Uh, uh, I almost called the show Homelander from the boys. What's Starlight? Starbright? What's her name? Starlight. Just use her from yeah, the boys. I, I Did you ever watch the boys? Did you watch the boys? Annie is her name in the show. Annie. Yeah, Annie. Annie from the boys. Okay, She's so we got Annie from the boys. We got Princess Amidala played by Natalie. Storm Brunt. <laughs> and I will go with from the new Batman movie, Catwoman, Zoe Kravitz. Okay. All right. All right. So you got to um, prank one, marry one, snap one, go. Um, I would say I would, I would marry uh, Queen Amidala because she's a queen and she has probably the most advanced technology I've ever seen. And you know, who knows like what what she's capable of. So definitely marry Queen Amidala. Uh, I would I would prank Starlight because it seems like she already has somebody she'd rather marry already, and I and you know I'm not Word. I'm not looking uh I'm not looking for competition. That's not trying to break up no happy home. <laughs> <laughs> and and I guess I would snap away. Cat Just Woman break it up for a minute. <laughs> she doesn't she doesn't have anything to offer. Catwoman comes with bare hands, so like so as I guess I guess that she's like Don't the last has got a lot to offer. Zoe Graham's got well, a lot well, to offer. Queen, well, hey, well, hey she's speaking uh, well, with Queen Amidala. She's speaking like. with Queen Amidala. So, I mean. <laughs> hey, Haas, you know who yeah. I was going to say, but he don't watch sports? Who? Mm. Because he's, he's in. Yeah, because he's in Miami. So I was oh, like, Troy oh, Taylor. Troy Taylor. That's a shoe. Oh. That's a shoe. I thought I had it. I thought I had it, but I had to, I had to fucking change it up at the last Ooh. second. I lost. I lost. You got lucky. Yeah. You got I'm, the, the, I had, I'm, the ultimate, I had. I'm the ultimate nerd. I don't, I don't watch no, it. It's, it's, hey, guess what? Good. I watched the the her with Colin Coward on mute just so I could see her. Stop. Stop. Then I unmuted, listen to her talk, and then I turned the whole show off. That's how fine <laughs> she is. All right, so let's get we'll get to the second half of the show. But Mikey has a message for our listeners first. Oh, I don't have zero over here with me. No, you don't. I'm need not gonna it. call him. I'm not gonna call him. But you guys remember uh, my little my little dog Zero? Still haven't fed him yet. You gotta put him because on the green guys- screen. <laughs> he's looking actually, very you know frail. Yeah, he's he's not, he's not got long on this world. <laughs> there we go. This guy. See, look at him. He is sad. He is sad because y'all. Have he's an adorable dog. No, the Dig on America podcast. Yeah, there we go. You can feed this <laughs> beautiful little dog. <laughs> See this little this motherfucker right here. No treats. No walks. No food. Until y'all go to patreon.com slash dig on America. Just chocolate. <laughs> then, you know, that's, and, oh my god. And, grape, and grapes. <laughs> you know, I, I think I think I found my dogs new... can't have grapes. No. No. It's very really? bad for them. Yes. My dog had a grape today. He went on the table and grabbed it. Yeah. Hey, guess what? Sure Don't let him get too grape many grape. grapes. Oh, I have yeah, no idea. Dog, they couldn't have grapes. It'll, grapes. it'll 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 they'll go into renal failure. It'll shut yeah. their kidneys down. Mm. Oh wow. I had no idea. Yeah. So if you ever got, I, it, I, I saw s'mores grab that grape, and I was like, oh, whatever. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't never even had a thought, and I wouldn't oh, have done no, that. No. I would have been able to educate myself. If the Patreon yeah. had been higher. Yeah, we could put Dutch in third grade again if you just go to patreon.com <laughs> slash dig on America. Also, Billy Madison. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think I found my new can. I think I found my new campaign ad for my donations on like Twitter or something. You want this? You want this picture? Yeah, I, 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 I get. I, I, I use my dog as the model so I can be more authentic. What kind of dog you got? Uh, it's a mixed dog. It's a, like they say it's a German Shepherd mix, but he looks nothing like a German Shepherd. I got him from uh, like the. Um, it's actually town. a bear. Uh... <laughs> he he kind of looks. He kind of looks more like a like a like a, a American bulldog. I think. So I'm going I'm to give you the best campaign tip of your entire career. Take that dog with you everywhere. Anytime you're on anybody's show, have the dog on camera, knocking shit over, being annoying. People love dogs. <laughs> Except if I saw the dude with the dog versus the dude without a dog, I'm voting for the dog dude every time. Yeah, Except he, for he, he's, he's asleep, so I'm not going to bother him. Lord what Bolton doesn't like dogs anymore. Oh. 
Yeah, that's a, geez, yeah. that's a deep Wait, who, cut. Who, 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 didn't like, who didn't like dogs? I'm yeah. sorry to hear that. Lord Game Bolton of- from Game of Thrones. Um, he likes <laughs> dogs for a while until the yeah. very last moment. <laughs> They're very, very hungry. Yeah. All right, Dutchman, what you got left? That's it. I have nothing else. I think Haas wanted to. Oh, look at that. Hulu. It's the Lulu Beam. Lou, Lou, what's wrong, Lou? What's up? Your, your what? Your throat hurts. Go get some water. Okay. She got the Rona. Why saw that kid? Okay. Get her with the white saw. Well, take another sip of water. I got to talk about these quarterbacks. Okay. <laughs> All right. And if you guys want to hear about all about those quarterbacks, be sure to go to patreon.com slash dig on America, where you can catch all of our wacky sports takes. That's my book up here. Because we ain't giving it away for free no more. You're going to have to pay $1 for it. $1 Twelve bucks a year. <laughs> Twelve bucks a year if you're feeling nice. All right. Any left touch? Nope. 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 All right. For a big You're house good. for Dutch and Mikey. See you on the <laughs> Patreon. All alphas are banned from the Patreon. For life, brother. That's full. <laughs> Why y'all hating on the? Why y'all hating?